Hi y'all, it's Andrea over at SewSpire.com and I am here today to show you how to sew a tight fitting face mask that has suction, so a nice seal. It fits all the way around the face. It's fairly comfortable to wear. I do feel like I can breathe easily with this style on and and I think I am not a scientist nor am I a doctor I'm just a woman with a sewing machine and a YouTube channel I think that if you steam iron these you can sanitize them if there are any scientists or doctors or nurses out there that can verify this for us, please do let us know. I have steam pressed this one and then I didn't directly put the iron on the elastic, but I did do the full blast steam on it. Another option may be tossing this in the microwave, okay? So I wanna get started sewing right away for those of you that are subscribers to the channel, if you tune in to the end of this video, I'll explain to you the inspiration and the why behind this project. As for everyone else, I know the need is urgent, so we're gonna get started right away. Going to need number four cone coffee filters. A hundred of these are $1.99 and you can still find them in the stores as of yesterday. I'm sure you can order them on online Amazon as well. You're going to need some quarter inch elastic. If you do not have elastic, you can sew ties that will go all the way around the back of the head. You can also sew fabric loops around the ears. I encourage you to be creative. I encourage you to adapt this design. And then if you will, please share your adaptions and modifications in the comments so that we can all benefit as well. So you're going to need two pieces of a quarter inch elastic, which measures seven inches long. If you are sewing this for someone who has a very large face, you can custom fit the elastic or perhaps add an inch to that. This seven inches fits my face comfortably. It also fits my daughter's face comfortably, which is slightly smaller. So I would imagine if you're sewing again for a man, you need to make that elastic a smidgen longer. A half an inch to an inch of elastic goes a really long ways. Then you're going to need to take your coffee filter and carefully open that up where it is sealed there. And you'll know because you'll see those little perforations. This is now your pattern, okay? You do not need to add any seam allowance to this. Just lay it directly on your fabric. And if you are using pins, put one pin on each side here in the perforations where the paper is already broken. I don't think you should poke holes in the rest of the paper for obvious reasons. Then you will have your pattern and you're going to lay that directly on your fabric and cut around that coffee filter. Do not add any seam allowance. You want your fabric pieces to be exactly the same size as your open coffee filter and then take those fabric pieces and again sanitize them with a hot steam iron and fold them in half and press so that we know where center is all right and to begin you will take your elastic loop it like that. You're going to take one of your pattern pieces 
and you're going to center one loop on the rounded side and one loop on the opposite rounded side with the raw edges hanging over and I'll show you what that looks like it's like that and that's approximately four inches in from the corner and then go ahead and stitch those elastic loops in place onto that top piece of fabric and then take your second piece of fabric and position that right on top of that fabric with the elastic loops and then take your open coffee filter and position that on top of your two fabric panels. So you have the coffee filter, one plain fabric panel, and then one fabric panel with the elastic tabs attached. Then starting at the top of the rounded portion, that corner over here, you're going to start sewing with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance using a back stitch and you're going to sew all the way around that half moon there. When you stop, you're going to want to back stitch to reinforce. I do stop at the elastic to reinforce with a back stitch. And you should be capturing all three layers in your seam allowance. And then just flip that over and check and make sure that the paper is secure and the fabric is secure. Then you can go ahead and remove any clips or pins that you have. I did trim mine up to the quarter inch seam allowance there. Just be careful not to cut your stitch line. This is the part that's going to sit across the face. So I feel like it will be more comfortable with a narrow seam allowance. And the reason we don't sew with the narrow seam allowance is more likelihood that we're going to not catch all three layers. So it's easier to sew it and then trim it than try to sew the quarter inch seam allowance. Okay, now you're going to turn this right side out. And at this point you can press if you like. Just don't put direct heat on your elastic because you don't want to weaken that but for but because I have already pressed mine is laying nice and flat for me so you just want to smooth that out and make sure that there's no wrinkles and then go ahead and fold that in half and that center press line comes in very handy and line up all of those raw edges nice and neat. If you have a serger, this is perfect for that machine. You could just serge this open edge closed. If you have a regular sewing machine, we're gonna use 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a straight stitch. You have the option, if you like, of coming back in with a zigzag stitch or you could do a French seam as well. For mine, I am just going with the straight stitch and trimming it because I'm going to sanitize my masks with the iron so there is little chance that they are going to shrink or fray on me. So starting at that top edge, 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and a back stitch. And then when you get to that bottom edge, back stitch as well. So 
that's what that looks like. And I did trim this out to the quarter inch. And this is the inside of the mask. So then you just want to take that and turn it right side out. And now if you wanted, you could come back in if you want those finished edges and you would sew right on the top edge of that raw seam that you just trimmed up and that will create a French seam and you will have a finished mm -hmm. interior for this mask. Now, that is going to change slightly how it sits on the face because there'll be a bump at the bridge of the nose. It will create a stronger seam there. So just use a very narrow seam allowance, a quarter inch. Be sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And I'm just going to try this on for you so you can see the difference with the French seam, which is finished, versus the one with the raw edges on the inside. And it has a good fit. For once in my life, big ears are useful. And I think that that French seam actually creates a better fit on the nose. Now for more protection, more protection if I were going out, I would wear glasses as well. And the mask actually fogs up my glasses. So when you breathe in your glasses, unfog. So that means there has to be some air escaping here at the top of the nose, which would make the glasses more beneficial. So there are my two versions. Again, you can improvise with the elastic. You can run it all the way around the head. You could do two bands all the way around the head. You could do fabric ties. You could do ribbon ties. For all of those modifications, create a prototype. You see this is a quick and easy sew. It is uncomplicated. So take the time to create a prototype and try it on yourself. For my family and friends, I will be sewing this version with the French seam. In fact, I'm going to be delivering some today. And I do want to offer you one other idea for this project. And again, not a scientist, not a doctor. I have no idea how effective this is. This is just me, a designer, improving upon what's already out there. If you can get your hands on some of these air filters. These are for your house um, air conditioning system. This one that I got is by 3M and it filters out like 99.9% .9 of viruses and bacteria amongst a whole other host of things. If you take apart that cardboard and kind of peel back, like this reminds me, it's like chicken wire off of there. Just be careful, maybe wear gloves. This is an accordion fabric in here. And you can get a lot of this filtration fabric from one of these filters and then just cut that filter using your 
open coffee filter as the pattern and then instead of sewing the mask with the coffee filter, you would sew it with the 3M filter. I have one of these in our HVAC unit right now, and then I have this one as my emergency supply um, if needed here, I will start producing masks using that. Until that time, I don't wanna open that filter yeah. again. Not a doctor, not a scientist, just trying to improve a design to solve an emergent problem. I welcome all of you to improve this design. Please do share with us. Please let me know if you're sewing these, if you have ideas, and if it's making a difference in your community, I would be so grateful if you would take the time to post some pictures and share that information with us. I am grateful for you and for all you're doing. I know many of you are already in full mass production, and I am so grateful for that. I know there is a debate out there in the world as to whether these masks will be useful I think that is a mute point, and I will tell you why. Yesterday, my very own mother, who is a nurse and worked many, many years in an intensive care unit and currently holds a PhD in nursing, asked me to make these masks, okay? My good friend, Susie, who you all may, might remember is a knitter, asked me to create this tutorial because her daughter works in the ICU, okay? So two nurses who I love very much and adore have requested these masks. So it's not up to you and I to determine if they're useful, all right? If you know how to sew and somebody asked you to sew them a mask that fits well, just do it. If nothing else, if they even feel slightly safer wearing the mask, then it was worth it, right? Because these nurses and doctors and emergency personnel right now are literally on the front lines, okay? So we wanna be able to help them I am not going to put up with any negative comments. That's nothing new here at SoSpire. If you can use this tutorial, please do. If you disagree with it, please keep those opinions to yourself, okay? As always, the creative genius in me will be celebrating the creative genius in you.